So today I'm happy to present a work on concentrate differential privacy for bandits with my supervisor, Deba Brota Basu. Uh, so let's start with a short tour of bandits. So multi-armed bandits are a model for sequential decision-making under partial information. They were uh, introduced by Thompson back in 1933 as a simple way to model clinical trials. So in a clinical trial, we have K candidate medicines and we want to find the medicine that cures the most number of people. To do so, we design an interaction protocol. At each step of this uh, sequential interaction, a new patient arrives and the doctor uh, recommends one of the K candidate medicines that we will also call uh, arms or actions. And then the doctor observes a reward, so a reward of one if the patient is cured and zero otherwise. The goal is to design a policy, uh, so an action choosing strategy that maximizes the sum of rewards or equivalently uh, minimize the regret. And the constraint is that we want to achieve this goal while protecting the privacy of the patients. So before uh, discussing the cost of privacy in the regret, let me give a brief summary of uh, results in the non-private uh, literature. So in this work, we study uh, three settings of bandits. The first one is finite armed stochastic bandits, where uh, we have K independent arms in the sense that sampling rewards from one arm uh, does not give any information about the reward of other arms. The optimal algorithm for this setting uh, it belongs to the class of uh, UCB algorithms, where the idea is to choose the action with the highest upper confidence uh, bound at each step, where the upper confidence bound is a sum between an uh, empirical mean and a bonus term for exploration. And the regret upper and lower bounds for these settings are of the order square root of kt. Uh, in linear bandits, we add a structural assumption that similar arms have similar rewards. Specifically, we assume that to each uh, arm, there is a, a, a d-dimensional feature vector a, and rewards are generated uh, with a scalar product between the unknown uh, theta star uh, parameter and the feature uh, A. The algorithms considered here are elimination based. They run in phases and at the end of each phase, they eliminate low, re low reward in arms and the regret upper and lower bounds in these settings are in the order of D square root of T. Finally, we also saw the contextual linear bandits where here we assume that there is no uh, best medicine for everyone, but that the best medicine may depend on the patient uh, in hand. So to each patient, we associate a d-dimensional context vector, and now the rewards are a scalar product between the unknown theta star, but now a combined feature representation of both the action and the context. The algorithm considered here is a generalization of UCB called LinUCB that chooses at each step Again, uh, an upper confidence bound, but now the optimism is done on the estimation of the uh, regression parameter theta hat. The regret upper and lower bounds are of the order d square root of t. Uh, so now I'll try to uh, define exactly the privacy constraints for bandits. And as a framework, uh, we will adopt differential privacy, as you uh, seen in this uh, presentation before. Uh, I will just remind the definition uh, for fixing notation. So uh, differential privacy is a constraint on randomized mechanism, and the mechanism satisfies this constraint if by changing one element in the input, the output distribution MD and MD prime are close enough. And the two notions of closeness that we're gonna consider are epsilon delta and zero concentrated DP. So for bandits, the rewards are the sensitive information that you're trying to protect. So in the clinical trials, the reaction of a patient to a medicine may reveal sensitive information about their health uh, conditions. So to extend DP uh, completely to this bandit setting, we need to specify three ingredients, what is exactly the randomized mechanism, the private input, and the output. I will present two ways to do so. Uh, for both uh, the two ways, the randomized mechanism will be uh, totally induced by the policy, and the output would be the sequence of uh, recommended actions A1 till AT. They will only differ in what is the uh, input data set considered due to the bandit feedback uh, specificity. So the first one uh, we call table DP, and the idea here is that basically we have two parallel universes. The policy interacts with G patients in the first one and the same but one uh, different patient. And the idea here is that the policy uh, satisfies table DP if the distribution over sequence of uh, actions is close enough between these two uh, universes. And the thing that I want to stress here is that uh, 
when a policy uh, recommends an action to a patient, it only observes uh, the reward corresponding to that action. So if I recommend medicine two to patient one, I only observe X subscript one, two, and not the other elements of the row. And that's what motivates the second definition, which is to be only differentially private on the observed uh, rewards. So a, a policy is view DP if the distribution over sequence of recommended actions again are similar where we only change one observed reward. What we show is that table DP always implies view DP with the same uh, privacy budget. These two definitions are exactly equivalent for pure DP, but for epsilon delta DP, the conversion from view to table DP happens with uh, a loss in the parameter delta due to some group privacy considerations. And actually these two definitions, we show that they are not exactly equivalent for epsilon delta DP. Uh, so we show that the class of epsilon delta DP, table DP policies are strictly included in the epsilon delta view DP. We also um, show some ways how to uh, extend the interactive DP definition for policies uh, due to the time constraints. I will not talk about them, but I'm happy to talk about them in the poster session. So now let's move to how to design uh, private bandit algorithms. We follow the same generic recipe for the three settings uh, discussed in the before. So, so the first step is to characterize what is the private, private uh, quantity of interest. This is just the sequence of empirical means for the first setting of stochastic bandits and the sequence of para, uh, parameter estimate that I had for linear and linear contextual bandits. So to estimate the sequence of uh, quantities privately, we follow the, fo the following procedure. First, we run the bandit algorithm in phases. This is already the case for the elimination-based algorithm, but for UCB and UCB, we have some doubling tricks to make them run in phases. Then uh, the private quantity of interest is only uh, computed on the samples collected in that phase, so we forget about the samples collected in older phases and we add calibrated noise. And the idea of estimating the sequence this way is that our quantities are computed on non-overlapping sequence of uh, rewards. This helps to avoid extra costs due to composition theorems. And finally, since now our quantities are noisy, we need to calibrate for the noise in the components of our algorithm. This means that we need to rec recalibrate the bonus in optimistic algorithms and explore arms longer in the elimination-based algorithm. So we analyze the regret of our three uh, private algorithms and we show that the regret is the sum of the non-private uh, regret plus some additional uh, cost due to privacy. And the main takeaway is that the price of privacy for the three uh, settings is asymptotically negligible when t goes to infinity. So the cost in the non-private is in square root of t while the additional cost is in log t. We also validate this uh, main takeaway experimentally by running the private and non-private algorithms and plotting here the price of privacy in the regret in the y-axis with respect to the time in the t-axis. So for the three settings and for different uh, privacy budgets, the price uh, goes to zero. And finally, to complete the picture, I'd like to present some regret lower bounds for private bandits, but before, uh, I would like to present a general uh, results of interest that may be uh, applied even for uh, beyond bandits. And the starting point is the group privacy for zero concentrated DP. So we know that if a mechanism is rho zero concentrated DP, then for any two data sets D and D prime, and for any alpha, the alpha in divergence between MD and MD prime are smaller than rho alpha D ham between uh, the ham indices between D and D prime squared. And now I'll try to uh, present how to generalize this when D and D prime are stochastically generated. So uh, I will define P1 and P2, the two data generation distribution and call M1 and M2 the marginals over the outputs when the data generation distributions are P1 and P2 respectively. And the question is how distinguishable M1 and M2 will be. And the answer we show that the KL between M1 and M2 is smaller than rho uh, times uh, an optimal transport problem, which is the infinimum over couplings of P1 and P2, the expected ham in distance squared when D and D prime are generated through uh, the coupling. So to solve, um, so this is an optimal transport problem on how to go from P1 to P2 
in a way that minimizes the cost, which is the dm squared. <coughs> so rather, uh, we can't solve this problem exactly. So as a proxy, we will use maximal couplings. So a maximal coupling between P1 and P2 is a joint distribution on P1 and P2 that minimizes the probability that X1 is different than X2 when X1 and X2 are uh, generated through the coupling. And this probability is exactly the total variation. So we plug this maximal coupling for product uh, data generation distribution, and we show that the KL now becomes smaller than rho, the sum of total variations squared. And the main takeaway here is that basically, when the data sets are stochastically generated, you go from the Hamming distance squared to a sum of total variations squared. So this is the main like, uh, information theoretical bound uh, to prove the lower bounds. We plug them for uh, inside the generic proofs of uh, regret lower bounds in bandits. And we get the third column here uh, of uh, lower bounds. So the lower bounds are uh, written as a max between two quantities, the non-private one and the new one that we get by plugging our new KL upper bound. Um, this lower bound suggests the existence of two hardness regimes depending on comparison between the privacy budget and the one over T and the upper and lower bounds uh, match up to logarithmic terms. So to conclude, uh, we study zero concentrated DP for bandits. We derive regret upper and lower bound. And for future work, we'd like to close the logarithmic gap between the upper and lower bounds, Gen uh, generalize our uh, uh, regret lower bounds also for epsilon delta DP that is that are still missing in the literature and also extend the analysis to the case when the contexts are also private. Uh, thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take uh, questions.